We're joined now by Dr. Olak Patel, a physician and medical journalist based in San Francisco. So, Dr. Patel, why has it been so difficult to pin down what leads to long haul syndrome and how to effectively treat it? Oh, it's a loaded question, but an appropriate one, Elaine. You know, I think part of the reason it's been so hard to pin down is kind of what we just heard in that in that piece right now is it's very diverse. Now, this recent study that came out with Fair Health that looked at over two million cases, or I should say two million charts, and found about a quarter of those had actual cases. We saw completely different demographics, so different ages, people from different parts of the country, different underlying medical conditions. You know, even people who had different presentations of COVID-19, you know, among that quarter who actually presented with these long hauler symptoms, it was briefly mentioned about 27% had mild to moderate symptoms, 19% had no symptoms. And so it's really hard to kind of pin it down to a specific cause, but I think what's really important is the awareness, the fact that there are these post-COVID care centers, and that finally, there's more research going into treatments, identifying it, and just helping people understand what to do if they do experience something that may be considered a long haul symptom. Yeah, that stat stood out to me as well. Almost 20% of patients who were asymptomatic or had very few symptoms ended up suffering from post-COVID health issues. Pretty alarming. Oh, it really is, you know, and that's why I think what's really important for everyone out there is if you do have a new medical symptom or if your underlying medical condition is worsening, say you're type one diabetes, you have kidney disease, and you're experiencing a change in your condition to really bring up any potential previous COVID-19 exposures you may have had. Maybe you didn't test for COVID-19 and you may have had it, you know, in some conditions, even in my own practice in the hospital, we've tested patients for antibodies to look to see if there was an exposure in the past. You know, and these symptoms are coming out in so many different forms from hypertension to brain fog to pain. And pain was actually one of the most common symptoms recorded here, but also things like chest pain or, you know, trouble with coordination. We're really seeing a spectrum here. The symptoms vary from pain to exhaustion. That same uh, study from health, say, uh, Fair Health rather mentions that women, women that they tested or looked at were more affected. What else has stood out to you about long haulers as you've seen this sort of progress over the last year and a half? You know, Elaine, two things are really standing out to me. The first one is what it's really taking for some patients to get better. You know, we've heard anecdotally, so not proven by, by research, some patients have talked about how they've gotten better after getting the vaccine. You know, unclear about how that's actually working, but that's good news. Other patients have gotten better from specific treatments. Some have just gotten better through the tincture of time, if you will, from having a multidisciplinary team. Other patients, unfortunately, still have the symptoms several months out. The other thing that's standing out to me is that we don't really know the exact mechanism, if you will, of how this is happening. Some people suspect that it was the immune system itself and kind of a reaction that's causing this. Other people think that it may be a primary effect. So the virus itself actually caused some nerve damage. But I, again, it's hard to pin it down, but I do, I, I do have reassurance in what we just heard from the, the clinic in Colorado, that there's more clinics out there. When I say multidisciplinary, I mean there's things like rehabilitation doctors, cardiologists, pulmonologists, basically all the specialists a patient may need to kind of sort through what's going on. And about 30 seconds left very quickly, we heard about all these different clinics, but are doctors across the country talking to each other in trying to figure this out? Are, are they taking best practices? What's been working here at this, uh, in this particular city and, and with these patients? Is everyone sharing information, I guess? From my experience, they are. And, you know, I think with the recent NIH grant to start looking at this more, it's getting the recognition it deserves. But there's also nonprofits out there, such as COVID Survivors for Change, Survivor Corps, which are actually pooling together more data. And so anyone out there who has questions can go online and you can look up and find a post-COVID care clinic and look to see if there's one in your state. I think there's progress being made and there has to be because it's, it's unclear about how much this is really going to affect us in the future after the pandemic. We just know it's going to. All great information. Dr. Alok Patel, thank you so much for joining us.